the first thing you're going to have to do is, is you're going to have to wean yourself away from getting emotionally involved with the rhythm section, maintaining your emotional independence, and calming down. Basically, what you've got to do is minimize your emotional output to the lowest possible level. Ask you, I'm going to ask you a question, there's only, one, there's only one of two answers, either yes or no. Do you think you can swing, yes or no? Yes. Then don't try to swing. By trying to do something you already can do, you mess it up. All right. All right. So if you have that confidence that you already can swing, then all you've got to do is play the notes. Okay. That's all you've got to do. Nothing in excess of that. Now let me show you the difference between playing in 4-4 and playing in halftime. This will double your chops immediately. Okay. Okay? You know like a, a C7 bebop scale, right? Yeah. Okay. Play it up and down. Uh, one hand that is fine. And tap quarter notes with your feet. Play it in a... Start mid range and go up two octaves and come back down. Oh, up, uh, okay. No, that's not quarter notes. Wanda, yeah, that's quarter notes. Ready? One, two, three, four. Now tap on one and three and do it. smoother. Right. So I got to feel the bigger beats. Yes. Okay. What you're actually doing, I need a board. What's the time signature most often used in Brazilian music? I, I don't know. Two four. Two four. That's okay. what you're doing, playing in two all four. All right, all right. Okay. So here's One and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One and three of the bar are what we call release beats. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Two and four attention beats. That's why you snap your fingers on two and four because it swings. Okay. One of the one and three of the bar are dead beats. They don't swing. Notice I had you counting, tapping on one and three. Right. So it's a way of counting that keeps you from getting excited. All right. Because okay. those beats don't swing. If you look at some of the videos that are older jazz musicians playing, most of them tapped on one and three. All right, and you can see why, Yeah. right? Yeah. So, what you're doing is taking two bars of four four and making it one bar of four four at, a, at uh. half the tempo. So now this becomes one, two, three, four. So eighth notes in four four now become sixteenth notes in 2-4. So now you're gonna, what you're going to have to do is retrain yourself to rethink all 8th note playing as 16th notes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, let me show you something. What this really is, is say this is the 4-4 tempo. One, two, three, four. And you're playing at halftime. What tunes are usually played at this tempo? Fast tunes. No, no just ballads. Tempo. You're right. Okay. So what you're doing, in effect, is making every swing tune a ballad. Oh, okay. And you can't get excited on a ballad. <laughs> okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so I could take, uh, influence out of your playing. Just play in time. But you've got to take all, all of that out so that it's... So it needs to be straighter? It has to be played smooth and even, right. 
Well, you you want to go back to the to the bebop scale? You see how smooth that yeah, was? Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, you, what you're doing is making everything at a ballad and playing double times sixteenth note lines at a ballad tempo, and they come out smoother. What's a bebop head? You know, uh, Celia. Play it tapping in four four the way you usually play it. You're in 4-4, four, four, your head's in 4-4, four, four, your foot's in 4-4. Four, four. You can't have any large muscle associations with what you're doing. All right. Because we're athletes of the fine muscles, not the big ones. Okay? So. to the issue. This is going to be a battle. Okay. And we all have habits. We all bring habits into our plan. Can't help it. Some you can beat in a week. Some you won't ever beat and everything in between. So it's going to take you a while. Okay. Okay. But empty out emotionally. Empty out. Minimize your emotion. Try it again. Don't feel anything because anything you're feeling is excessive. <laughs> okay. You understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. this with your mouth I see it all the time that means you've got tension as soon as you close your mouth like that and start tightening up it's going to change your articulation happens all the time relax your mouth smile that's it there you go no not quite one two three four one two three four Watch out for loud, watch out for loud, soft, loud, soft articulations. That's a fake way of, of swinging. Okay. It's an articulation. Here's my philosophy on articulation. The function of articulation is to enhance the line. It's its only function. No articulation should be automatic. And you're not in control of that. Every articulation has to be met, whether it's a legato hit or a, or, or a staccato hit or a sforzando or a pianissimo or whatever it is, or a dotted A16th. It all has to be met. No, no articulation can be automatic. So you always start from an absolutely smooth bass. That is a, a process I call technique of extremes. If you have a problem in a certain area, you go in its opposite direction in an extreme way for X amount of time, which clarifies the parameters of what you're doing. You understand? Mm -hmm. Once you have the extreme end of it, like playing completely smooth for as long as it takes for you to get that together, then you can start bringing back and adding articulations to it, but only in a conscious manner, not automatically. Okay. All right? So, play your lines will solve this real quickly. All right. Uh, most young pianists who have had extensive classical background, when they go to jazz, think there's a difference between jazz piano technique and classical technique. There is none. Playing the piano is playing the piano. And most of you just throw away years of valuable work by adopting this over excessive, sloppy, quote unquote, jazzy technique that does not cut it. So, here's what I want you to do. You play any Bach? Uh, a long, a long time ago. Is there any kind of a classical piece you remember right now? <sighs> All I need is eight bars of something. I, I, I don't think I'd be able to do that. All right, but so. that's what you've got to do. You've got to take a Bach piece, 
play eight bars of it. Take a kinesthetic snapshot of how your body is being used, how it feels, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And then go into bebop and retain that. There's no such thing as jazz technique. So you've thrown away years of valuable technique by thinking there's another way to play the piano. There is not. Playing the piano is playing the piano. And what you want to do is bring all that good classical work back into your playing. You already can swing. It's not going to affect your swing. You already agreed to that. So that's all you got to do. It will smooth out your playing tremendously. You keep switching back and forth. Eight bars of Bach, eight bars of bebop, eight bars of Bach, until you can bring the classical approach back into your playing. Because that's totally non-productive. Okay. It's making you overplay, over-articulate. If, if I had to find one word that would be, define my growth as a musician over the 50 years I've been playing, the word would be control. All right, so you have to control your mind, and you have to understand, this is not the instrument. Just, it's an illusion. It looks like it's the instrument. We're the instrument. You're the instrument. Your mind, your body, and your emotions are the tools you're refining in order to play the machine. You do. All right? So, don't let this thing fool you. you know, All right. This is not real. Okay. What you're feeling, what's going on in your mind, your body, and emotions, that's the reality you're dealing with because everything is involved with playing music is an internal process, not an external process. Now I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Okay. There's two ways to play a musical up machine. You can use the machine to manipulate the sound, or you can use the sound to manipulate the machine. The first approach is, is mechanical. The second approach is sonic. It has to do with using the sound of the machine to manipulate the machine, not the machine to manipulate the sound. See, the piano is a cold-hearted bitch. She doesn't want you to play her. So what she's done to, to, to distract you and get you off the track is giving you levers to push up and down, which makes you feel like you're playing her. You see? But that's just pushing levers up and down. And that ties the truth about her, you know. And you've got to get underneath her skirts <laughs> to get to the truth, right? Now, the truth of it is you're using the mechanism to control the sound. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, and this is going to be challenging, how to use a sonic approach to co control the machine, all right? Okay. Built into every musical instrument is its own metronome. Now, what you're doing is using an inner body clock of quarter notes to keep time and to articulate. You don't need to do that anymore. You can use the sound of the machine. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take the first five notes of the C scale, up and down. And you know, when you hit a note, you get a swell, then you get a decay, and if you're holding it, you get a series of treble and bass overtones. All right? mm -hmm. I'm going to hit the first five notes of the C scale. And I'm going to pick a particular place way back in the swell and decay, in the, in the alternating, sorry, in the, past the swell and decay, in the alternating overtone series, to hit each next note. In other words, I'm using the sound of the note that I'm playing to control when I'm playing the next note. Okay. Not any external timekeeping thing. So. What would you have to set your metronome on at to play that slow? Tick, 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 right? Yeah. But you notice I played it perfectly even. Uh huh. Where in the, in the overtone series was I hitting the next note? Right when it goes, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Right? You hear it? On this way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it gets kind of whiny. Okay, now I want to play it faster. I'm playing it right at the end of the swell. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly even. 
perfectly even. Now another place. Here, there's an extra rhythm in it. Oops. Hear the rhythm? How do you play? The faster you play, the harder it is to hear. Yeah. At the beginning. <laughs> Perfectly even. Not counting. You dig it? Now, you're not going to be able to bring this to the bandstand. You're not going to be able to go to the bandstand and say, I think I'll play swell and decay. This work, is, this is a problem of keyboard awareness. Okay. A lack of awareness of the depth of the keys. If you have a mechanical approach, it keeps you on the surface of the keys. If you have a sonic approach, you're using the sound of the instrument. Now, the, one of the other holdovers from childhood study is to assume that playing notes in time and space is a matter of playing a series of attacks. That's what we're first taught. The problem is, how long is an attack? <laughs> it's a nanosecond. Right. Okay? It's actually an event too short for the mind to control. So, now this forces you to listen to the tone, to the sound of the note, and most importantly, to the end of it. Because no one ever seems to mention this, that playing a note is two things, starting it and stopping it, and both have to be done in time. Okay, so you're not thinking about how you end your notes. I usually uh, refer to them as little bastards you're procreating <laughs> and then absolving yourself of all responsibility as soon as you played it and creating <laughs> another little bastard. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> well, you have to accept the responsibility of the whole tone. So what we're doing is shifting your perceptual point of attention from the beginning of the note to the end of the note. And interestingly enough, the end of a note is more rhythmic than the beginning of a note. Okay. All right. So, first five notes of the C scale. Pick the longest possible duration you think you can do this for, and he hit all the succeeding notes in the same place, whichever place you pick. Don't nod your head. Large body motion. Don't make any physical associations, large body associations with what you're playing. Okay. And don't quote Keith Jarrett to me because, because you can do that if it doesn't come out in your playing. Oh. Okay. Oh. You can do any kind of motions you want as long as it doesn't show up in your playing. It doesn't show up in Keith's playing, so he can get away with it. Okay. All right. Everybody quotes Keith. <laughs> but what about Keith Jarrett? All right. All right. You notice what I, you know? I'll play a little faster. Now, what you're doing is a couple of things here at once. First of all, you are changing your perceptual, your perception of the sound of the instrument, right? To that of being attacked, to that of tone. S uh, secondly, you're practicing concentration, only you don't realize it, because in order to practice concentration, you need a focal point on what, upon which to concentrate, and a point of attention. So I'm shifting your point of attention from the beginning of the note to what's happening at the end of the note. It's a perceptual change. The problem is, a, as far as I'm concerned, most problems with playing are perceptual or conceptual in nature. Okay, so, we're so, so you're going to have to do at-home work. 
uh, until it changes the way you hear notes. Now, you're not going to be able to hear the faster notes, the swell and decay, yeah. right away. And you're going to have to be very patient with yourself. And then don't think about it when you go to play. You just can't bring it to the bandstand. All right. What you're going to bring to the bandstand is your change perception when that occurs. It's a long-term process. Yeah. But you can see how already... Well, your notes are so much fatter and you, you, your time is stronger. Because I'm listening, I'm using the sound of the instrument to keep time. Yeah. I'm deeper into the key. Yeah, that's that's it. Way deeper. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes it gets real thin. Yeah. Today. Yeah, you're skating across. You're skating across it sometimes. You know. Oh. You know. Yeah. Just fluffing the notes, barely touching them. Yeah. yeah. Instead of playing them all. Yeah. Like. So you have to learn how to play smooth and even first till it's automatic. Then you can start adding loud, soft articulations and long, short articulations and stuff right. like that. Okay. So you come from a legato bass and you add everything else to that.